sister. Can you hear me? Go ahead, sister. Go ahead. We can we hear you clearly. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. They, dear Jesus, as you were growing and were in your 12th year, you were also growing in the awareness of your relationship with our Heavenly Father. Your response to your mother Mary, you were looking for me, confirms that you had on your own will stayed behind in the temple and not because you were lost. Dear Mother Mary, you express the universal anxiety of all parents feel about their growing children. But the beauty is that you, Jesus, have the docility to submit to the authority of your parents who also had the wisdom to trust you. Mother, you pondered everything in your heart and together with Joseph, ensured you provided the ambience and resources for your son, Jesus, to grow in wisdom, in stature, and in favor with God and with people. The Feast of the Holy Family invites us to draw inspiration from Joseph, Mary, and Jesus in the subtle dynamic of parenting a growing child. We ask you, God, our Father, in the name of your son, Jesus, to help parents, teachers, catechists, and all those who are involved, learn from Jesus, the spirit of docility. Amen. 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 Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. So, my sisters and brothers, we would like to thank our sister Mariola for leading us in that beautiful opening prayer. And uh, today, as I mentioned to you at the introduction, today we are going to have testimonies. And those of you who have really been touched by God's word, those who have really you know, experienced God's love in a very tangible way, those who have you know, been growing in your intimacy with the Lord through his word, Today is an opportunity for you, if you can't even, you know, preach or, you know, do a teaching, each one of us, without fail, can actually share our own testimony. And when we share our own testimony, it is an opportunity for us to share our own gospel, what the word has done in our life. So, brothers and sisters... We are going to begin with our first sharer today, our sister Sarah. She's going to share her testimony of the goodness of the Lord. Many of you probably know her because she has come before to this class and shared her testimony. But today, she's going to share what the Lord has done in her life. And in the meantime, if any of you wants to share, please put it on the chat. I'll make you a co-host so that you can also share your own testimony. So welcome, Sister Sarah. You can unmute yourselves and you can you, share your testimony. So we would like to ask you to come onto the screen and share your testimony of what the Lord has done. Thank you, brother. Thank you so much. Brother, I'll put the video off if you don't mind because I'm a little uh, conscious of the video. So it's okay with you then. All right, all right. Whatever is, makes you comfortable, you can share. No problem. Yeah. So praise Jesus, brothers and sisters. I'm here to glorify my Lord Jesus Christ. So all of you must be knowing that I was born in a Hindu family. And uh, recently I was baptized uh, as a Catholic, Roman Catholic. And um, from then my journey began uh, because uh, my journey began in the sense like I was, I, I knew Jesus, but I never had a relationship with Jesus until I think, uh, I, until I came to JCILM and Brother Vincent's teaching, Brother Johnson's teaching, when I heard uh, for the first time earlier, what I used to do is I was, um, I was touched by the Lord uh, right from my childhood, I can say, but it was just the love of Jesus. I used to love Jesus. But later on, I was like, after marriage, I was only seeking the blessing and not the blesser. I was only running after the blessing and running after preachers. 
so um, and then after i came to jclm teachings i really learned what was the uh, true uh, meaning of the uh, bible and how do how does how do you apply the word and how you know um, actually it is like the relationship with brother johnson taught like you know how uh, you have to have that relationship with jesus and uh, uh, i mean uh, Ma, then uh, matthew 633 became alive to me like you know so uh, after that I, there was no turning back then i was only focused on jesus and not what the situation around me was like you know whatever situation i was seeing like earlier it was always the scene whatever used to happen of course uh, there were times when i was like even now uh, we are, i'm a work in progress till now but uh, i really understood the work in i mean uh, whatever the word uh, meant like uh, recently i had corona uh, way back in i think uh, august yes in i had uh, corona and when i had corona at that time uh, it was like the uh, and i was like uh, sure you know that uh, when i was uh, uh, you know confessing the word like i am the body of christ and satan sickness sin you have no power over me so i used to think that no no virus can touch me nothing can happen to me but you know i was like uh, that and uh, when the report uh, came like you know that i had corona i said uh, it can't be and the doctor is telling me you have corona i said it can't be like i was literally crying to the lord and then guilt came condemnation came uh, maybe i have done something wrong and that's the reason but uh, that particular day i was quarantined i had to come and stay alone in a flat and uh, when i was and i was scared of darkness but the moment i entered the flat and i was telling the lord i was crying to the lord two things was jesus why me uh, why did i get this corona when i when uh, when you are within me when the word of god says that greater is he that, that means to say you are within me then how can i get corona lord and the second thing was like how will i live alone because i was scared of darkness and i was scared of living alone so those were the two things that uh, you know i had i fear of so uh, i entered the room and suddenly you know the word of god came very much alive to me and it became like you know i i could hear that voice saying that you know uh, your own nursing mother can forsake you but not i so the the moment that, that word came to me i was like oh jesus you are with me and i was i mean i was i was overjoyed like you know and i came and i sat on into my bedroom and i was like feeling very weak my temperature went to 106 107 that sort of a thing and um, they had given me the kit so i was every time i was monitoring my um, uh, oxygen saturation level and it was going down to 88 89 that sort of a thing and when they told me that when it is above below 95 then you have to get yourself admitted to the hospital and you have to call up the ambulance but thank you jesus for jclm teachings and i would say brother johnson who taught one thing he taught he said that do not look at the scene even if you see even if you see that you have and he had told me that you go to the god's medicine uh, preaching wherein he had fallen down uh, and he had excruciating pain but he never looked at that pain he just got up and he just started running so i was like okay fine jesus the weak shall say i am strong so lord you are there with me when you say that you are there with me that means to say nothing can happen to me and every day the doctors used to call me and ask me what is your temperature so i used to tell them when my temperature was 106 i used to tell them 98 so when my oxygen level was uh, you know um, uh, sort of uh, um, 88 and whatever i used to say them 97 so they were like okay fine so no pain in no pain you don't have any pain no so throat when my i had i could not open my jaw actually my my mouth was you know like i could just it was paining so badly but the holy spirit gave me one uh, uh, this uh, the holy spirit revealed something to me and what i got a thought was like you know i i took water i took a glass of water and i literally forced uh, the water into my mouth and i said lord uh, jesus you are the same yesterday today and forever so lord you have uh, done the miracle at the wedding of cana the same uh, uh, the what you have turned the water into wine at that time lord i know lord you are present here right now and you have turned this water into your precious blood and lord my throat has been healed now i said this and i just forced that water into my my throat i said it in the sense i could not open my mouth i could not speak but i in my thoughts i'm saying this 
so that was it and at night uh, thank god uh, jesus uh, gave me one uh, this thing he said you go to melbourne teaching because i was alone and i was scared so but that fear also went and the moment i heard brother johnson talking brother linus talking i was like okay fine you know the lord is with me they are talking about i mean i was like very much in the word like you know and a uh, whole night i listened to that preaching the next morning when i got up i could literally open not only open my mouth i could sing actually that was i my throat was completely healed i thank god and i praised god that day and uh, after that people their doctors were calling me every day and uh, but i was giving them the uh, i was not tell, lying to them but i was lying because i knew whatever whatever i saw was lies was lies of the devil but whatever uh, my god said that by the stripes of wounds uh, by the my by my stripes and wounds you were healed you were healed that means to say 2000 years back all my corona and all and it's not written in the bible there is nothing corona written in the bible so i said lord this is all false so i will not accept what the doctor's report says and i was like and after that even i could not walk up to the kitchen i was feeling very weak but i say i kept on repeating the weak shall say i am strong the weak shall say i am strong and i was feeling i was then i was getting my strength from there i don't know the angels uh, i mean every time it was everything was happening supernaturally for me at that time the second thing was uh, i was very scared about and i was healed after that and i thank god and i came out uh you know perfectly fine and people were asking me how did you do this and all that even when i had corona there were people who were calling me and telling me smita you are not brother johnson you brother johnson has uh, he's uh, reached that another level i said sorry if brother johnson brother vincent or whoever is the preachers they have been given the equal measure of faith so only what they have done is they have labored and if i do that god is no god is not partial to anybody god is the same for everybody if we are god's children and only thing that pleases god is our faith and nothing else oh earlier you know Thank i used to god. feel that i used to feel candle lighting candle or saying so many rosaries or reading this bible or doing this doing that that pleases god no it is only your faith it is and last time when i went to don brother taught me another thing he said more important is your trust so i come to this trust part of it the earlier when i was when i was having corona also i showed trust in god i said god if i die i will be with you if i am alive i will be with you so so that means to say i am not scared of anything lord so when i reached that level god brought me out of it second thing what i would like to say is i lost my job earlier i was so much scared about my job 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 it was like you know uh, i used to go to people i used to go to my bosses i used to please them everywhere whatever you know i used to work up to 2 o'clock at night and get up at again 4 o'clock because i had to perform and i was a very strong performer i've got so many awards i've got an award from the chairman and i was like so much of uh, this thing that i will never lose my job until one day it happened that overnight uh, they called me up and they said that uh, no you have to you have they are, you have been separated from the company and at that time instead of crying to that person who was telling me i was literally speaking brother i was like you know i was talking of course earlier i had little bit of uh, this thing that there were but but the word of god came to me very clearly that you know uh, do not worry about tomorrow you know uh, tomorrow will take care of its uh, its own self so you don't worry about tomorrow that word came and i was at peace so i said when jesus is in my boat why should i be bothered jesus is my only source so he is not just i don't have a plan b and c i have just a plan a that is jesus he is there for me amen have, yeah so i so i depended on him so i showed trust so when that trust came in me that you know jesus whatever happens you are there with me and you will human beings you are people can be uh, uh, unfaithful but god is always faithful and when i put my trust in him then he is there for me so i was like yes lord and when they told me like you know others were panicking and all that and they thought that i would panic uh, knowing my nature by my my company people had known me for 27 years in this company i was working so they knew me and i was at a good position and they knew me very well so you know mita you know please don't um, uh, uh, take it otherwise and all i said no sir i understand you please tell me what it is so they told me okay sir this sir and that sir and whatever and i just uh, replied to them very normally and the call got over i think within 5 to 7 minutes the call got over whereas other people 15 20 minutes they were only going on asking questions to them 
but i just finished up the call and after that i told him what i have to do you tell me and i just gave my resignation and in my resignation i said i thank the organization and i thank all the people who, in, uh, who were my bosses my uh, colleagues i thank everybody i wrote that and whereas others were you know they were uh, having that unforgiveness they were having all those kind of thing negative things but i never had that unforgiveness because of one thing what brother vincent taught me he said thank you jesus thank you our father for filling me with the love of jesus this word has become flesh in me and when i said that when i say that that means to say even if i have unforgiveness the lord uh, you know he puts his he that forgiveness comes the love of jesus comes flows within me and then after that i cannot for, uh, have unforgiveness or hatred towards anybody i uh, immediately i uh, start loving that person and after that my hr person called me and told me smita you don't have to worry we will find out a job for you i said sir it's okay my god is there for me my god is my source my god now i whenever anybody calls me and talks to me about some worldly thing or whatever i tell them about the love of jesus and i tell them that jesus is my only source and when i tell them that they are themselves they are they wonder how come a person like me who was so uh, uh, what you call in uh, uh, i had inferiority complex i had uh, you know uh, insecurity within me so much of negativity within me i did not my confused mind but when the word of god came alive to me that you have been given a sound mind at that time i mean all these things as you know the word cleanses us they say so whenever i listen i have so many preachings i have listened so now it's become like you know all the stronghold the strongholds have been broken and now there is only one stronghold within me and that is jesus loves me my lord loves me and there is nobody who can replace jesus is love for me nobody not even your parents uh, your brother your sister anybody you know oh. your god parents nobody can give you that love what jesus gives you yes and uh, i would like to end this by saying that you know years back i was looking you know i was always wanting to have been baptized in the catholic religion i was telling people please uh, uh, pray for me pray for me and uh, but it never happened because god has his own timing and um, yes because maybe i never really had a relationship with jesus and that is the reason it took time and uh, i was baptized uh, i have got lovable god uh, uh god parents and uh, the best god parents the most lovable god parents and a very very uh, lovable and best uh, spiritual father so i thank jesus for everything yes thank you brother i'm sorry i was little nervous to talk so I'm... praise god sara i i am going to call you sara from today because that's the name you know saul was called as paul abraham became abraham and smita became sara isn't that so wonderful wonderful isn't that wonderful you know my sister and brothers this sister of us who is sharing her testimony today is a living example of the love of god as she shared she has been listening to the word of god for so many years but it's only a few months ago that she finally committed herself she said lord i need you to be my lord and i need you to be my master and when she experienced the love of god not that she has experienced you know she's living on a bed of roses neither is she living right now even though she's come to the lord her problems have still not gone away but do you know that she can still have the courage and the strength and that love of god within her to come here and say what the lord has done what the lord has done in her life and you know when we have all heard a testimony a short while ago a testimony wherein she said when she was having that corona virus how many of us when we are isolated with corona virus having 106 107 when the doctors call her and she says it's 97 98 that's because that's normal temperature because when you begin to believe something you're going to tell them exactly what you believe not what is going on because the moment she said 106 or 107 the ambulance would take her away and put her in hospital but when she confessed that it is 97 98 
in the natural she appears to be a liar but in before god's eyes she is a beloved child of god because she is confessing that nothing is wrong with her she is having the protection of the lord that this sickness has to die before the word of god there is nothing that this word of god cannot do in her life and praise god within 24 hours as she shared her fever left her she was able to open her mouth and she never went to hospital because today she is testifying she is free from coronavirus is that right is that right sara is that right that you know today when you are testifying yes brother yes brother yes brother yes, coronavirus that you are here to testify by not getting medicines and getting you know admitted in the hospital but by the precious blood of jesus isn't that wonderful you know we can learn so much from this testimony of our sister sara because many of us if we had to be having coronavirus we would have been having a temperature of 106 107 we were isolated we would simply have been calling out oh i'm going to go maybe you know the shivering this high fever it's not 102 103 106 107 is a very high temperature but when you are isolated there could be a lot of thoughts going into your mind maybe when those people come and call you for for help and saying that you know we'll take you to ambulance you would rather prefer to be with people around you where at least you're on a drip or something but when you have that sort of faith and that relationship that you begin to confess not what the temperature is but you confess the temperature that you really want to have that's normal 96 97 that's normal temperature 106 107 is actually what she's having right now but to be able to say that and still stay in the hostel at the house isolated and then to 24 hours to see the temperature go away and then you know eventually when the test is done she's corona free praise god that's wonderful absolutely an awesome testimony then coming to her job she has been a performer she wanted that job she wanted to be in that company but the day the company says it's over no more job you have to sit at home we are we are we are taking you out of the job a person who's got all these awards now the company should keep you but the company says no we are not going to keep you anybody in her place after getting all these awards being a star performer she would have probably been broken just like all the other colleagues were broken but what does she say lord if i have your love and you are my source that even if they don't give me the job even if they don't give me the job i know my god you are my source from today all this time my job was my source my salary was my source what the company was giving me the awards and all my name and fame in the company for being a star performer was my source but today even if that was my source earlier today it is god's love that is my source isn't that wonderful isn't that awesome and that's why my sister and brothers at this point in time i want to open up the floor for any of you who would like to ask the sister any question does any one of you want to ask our sister Sarah any questions? Because you know, this is a very powerful testimony. Please understand, she is coming from a background where she never grew with the word. She's not going to church. She's gone into a, in a non-Christian background. But for somebody all these years hearing the word of God and now to have that sort of a faith, to have that sort of a faith, even when she's having 106, even when she loses a job and to come here and testify, surely I want some of you, if you have a problem right now, if you have something right now, I want our sister Sarah to pray for all of us here so that that same anointing, that same power faith, that same Abraham faith, that same strength, that trust that she has right now because of her relationship with the Lord, she can pass on to each one of us. Does any one of you want to ask her a question? Anybody? Does anybody want to ask her? Or does anybody want to, you know, have, a, you know, if you, if you heard a testimony, there's something that you would like to clarify. Because this is a powerful testimony, my sister and brothers. We need to learn from her testimony. Remember, it's not always a teaching that is always going to teach us. But someone's testimony can teach us a lot. 
Someone's testimony can build us a lot. Someone's testimony can actually strengthen us so much that now if God can do it to Sarah, he can do it for each one of us who can now say, my source is my God. My source is not the, my boss. My source is not the country where I am. The source is not where I've left my hometown to be in a foreign land. My source is my God. Whether I'm at the Eskimos, whether I'm in the, at the equator, whether I'm in, back in my home country, wherever I am, my God is my source. My God is my source. And I must thank my sister Sarah for sharing her testimony because it has definitely blessed me. If any of you want to ask a question, please ask her a question. Anybody? Anybody wants to ask that so that we can ask her before that to, you know, say a prayer for each one of us. So pass that same anointing on each one of us. Anybody, my sister and brothers? Sister Marcella, would you like to ask her any question? Uh, I just uh, yeah, uh, praise God for her testimony. It was awesome. I just reached uh, to hear her testimony. I got a bit delayed. Uh, thank you, Sister Sarah, for this wonderful testimony. Uh, I would like to ask one question. Is the family also uh, joined you in this faith? Uh, mm, not really, but uh, mm, but uh, in the uh, in the unseen, uh, I can see them. They have already joined. So I because God. words have power. Praise so I will say God. that, uh, yes, all of us are, I will say. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Even there she gave a perfect answer. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. She's uh, calling from the spirit, uh, from supernatural to the realm, to the natural. Beautiful, Sarah. Uh, your, your trust is so strong now. Uh, I think um, you will go a long way. And uh, bring many souls to Christ, to the kingdom. Amen. Of Amen. Sister, Amen. Mar uh, Sister Marcella, right? I would like to say that, you know, the name Sarah, how I got, I mean, how I, the Holy Spirit gave this name to me. The day I was baptized, uh, the priest asked me, can I, uh, brother, I hope you remember this. Uh, uh, the priest asked me, you can take your name as Maria. So immediately I said, Sarah. The reason why I had this name in mind was when uh, when I first came to JCILM and uh, Brother Johnson, uh, you know, when I met Brother Johnson for the first time and the teachings have touched me so much. He said that, you know, there are you are pregnant with a ministry, he said, and you have lot many souls in your womb. Yes. Uh, which you have to release. So that is the reason I took the name of Sarah. And uh, I know that when I read in the Bible that when Abraham, when they, when he called her, Sarah, her name was Sarai before, when he called her Sarah, that is he, I mean, and then he was, he was, what he was proclaiming was he was calling her mother of nations. And that is how she became, so words have power. So that is the reason I took the name of Sarah. So when all of you call me Sarah, 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 that name comes. So I know that it will be, uh, you know, it will, uh, it will be manifested in the natural realm. So that is the reason I take my name, Sarah. Awesome. Awesome. Isn't that wonderful? Wonderful. Glory to God. Beautiful. Beautiful. Glory. Glory. Thanks. Thank you. Beautiful. Even, even, even when For she your says, testimony. I call me Sarah, she says, I'm mother of nations. Just like Abraham was exalted, Abraham was exalted father, but Abraham was father of nations. In the same way, Sarah, Sarah, Sarah is nothing but mother. She's, she's the mother of so many nations. And if she in her spiritual womb is pregnant with so many souls and she takes that name, just like Abraham and Sarah, this Sarah also is going to be, is being used by the Lord to bring so many who don't know Christ, who have never heard of Christ, who have never heard the gospel. This Sarah is also going to bring them to the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank Amen. you, Jesus. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Anyone want to ask her something before we, you know, we ask her, our sister Sarah to make that prayer for us? Same anointing. Anyone? Sister Joyce, would you like to ask her something? Yeah, I was, I was just thinking that, uh, you know, she, her faith, is so wonderful, amazing. She's just a she's just a young girl. How old you must uh, Sarah be? I am. How old? If you see, if you see the scene, I am fifty three. 
but in the unseen that is in the by spirit i am okay. i'm okay. just a toddler okay. <laughs> okay good good but whatever it is oh i thought you were much younger there and hey, whatever okay. whatever for you, the words of wisdom that are coming out of your mouth and the fear that you know we all get when we have little aches and pains it was such a powerful testimony that you know it's really opened my eyes up i'm 71 and i'm thinking to myself shame on me we have jesus with us right from the start we have the lord guiding us you know and see this girl you just you're a baby in this you know and you've been blessed sarah thank god you taught us so much so sister joy how many people today who have been born in christian homes are still little babies yes. and saras who have got to know the word of god have already grown and become adults matured. she's a matured Indeed. christian in jesus how uh, many of us who have grown in the christian who have been celebrating maybe we have, yes. have celebrated 53 christmases we have yes. celebrated 53 easter when yes. a very sara she has just come to know the lord she just been baptized yeah. months ago and today when she begins to look at the lord she is now a spiritual adult whereas there are some who Wonderful. have grown in a christian family who have taken for granted their faith are still little babies still babies the bottle yes. milk from the bottle yes yes brother i'm not ashamed to say that but sometimes see we she had such high temperature and look at her her braveness and i panic when i have little pain little indigestion you know what a shame it is we we are so unfaithful yes no, sir joyce i would like to say that it's not uh, you 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 said matured i am not certain times i am not uh, you know i still uh, Uh, you know have my ups and downs in life i still go back like yesterday only i was talking to uh, my brother vincent and you know he told me certain things and i was like again i uh, you know when i make some uh, when i when there are when i go down when i am in my low i when i speak to brother he gives me certain things and then i make the correction the necessary correction the important thing is all of us fall but the important thing is we have to make the correction at that moment and then come back to the lord and say lord i'm sorry for for this whatever and then you know and exactly. then lord is very faithful that's the main important you, is correction very thank true you, thank you sarah lovely yes, words yes. of wisdom beautiful yes. thank you so and much and we thank the lord for brother vincent i thank the lord for brother johnson praise god thank you jesus beautiful sarah Beautiful. Sarah, I'm 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 crying with joy. I don't know, but your testimony was so beautiful. God bless Thank you, sir. Jesus. Praise God. Sarah, I want to say one thing, sisters. Mm-hmm. Only Thank thing you. I would like to say here is, you know, when you are in your just now, sister Joyce said that you know when she had some uh, acidity. I don't know what you said. Some sickness. Something yeah. Sometimes said. food yeah. comes up so, for me. I can't yeah. eat. so so the only thing that you can do is there's an exercise uh, what i've learned is you know when your thoughts the devil attacks you in your thoughts right so uh, uh, so when you speak the word of god you continuously speak so when you're speaking supposing now uh, for instance you when you say i praise you jesus thank you jesus and at the same time if you're uh, you try to count, uh, count 1 to 10 uh, in your mind so you know th- whatever when you count when you're counting that 1 to 10 in your mi- mind and if you when you simultaneously you speaking the word you will not be able to do two things at a time right so at that moment when the devil attacks you in your mind okay saying that you know you have got a particular thing or whatever keep on say confessing the word of god so much so that you know those thoughts will disappear at that time so yes, this is what yeah. i do and when you have that trust in god no you i mean whatever it is lord it is you just focus on the lord and that is the time you know i have got so many problems sister sister joyce it is like you know if you see i mean every side i have got uh, enough of if you see in the scene but i know my god jesus in, is in my boat 
it's it's like you know i just heard one uh, one teaching in uh, jclm wherein they said that uh, if when jesus was in the boat the, the disciples there they panicked yes. at the storm and yes. what did jesus say you people you men of little faith so faith. so the lord is also telling us you know, when i am in your boat why do you fear about your job about this happening that happening it's like you know don't yes brother yesterday told me do not look at you know what is happening around just see, know that jesus is in your boat when jesus is in your boat and you yes. don't have any plan b or c that you know that this person will give me a job or that person this will happen you only know one thing that jesus is my provider psalm 91 says that he is your uh, he is your uh, you know your uh, fortress your uh, your everything he is jesus is everything for you so don't concentrate thank on you, anything you know when that Wonderful. thing comes i think you know he is thank you for passing it on to us yo praise god praise god uh, just what my sister sara has been saying i want you to read this verses from 2 corinthians chapter 10 she just told us a, a formula she just gave us a formula and i want somebody to read this for me please uh, uh, 10 or 4 Four to four to six. Two Corinthians okay. chapter ten verses four to six. Okay, I'll read it. Yeah. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought. to the obedience of christ can you see that again can you see that again sister and bringing and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of christ one more time one more time very slowly very slowly i am bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of christ bringing into okay. captivity every thought to the obedience of christ bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of christ now let me come to let me let me just you know since we since we heard sara's testimony let us let let us just go and see what the scripture is saying it is saying bringing every thought so thoughts come from where where do the thoughts originate in the mind in the mind so if every thought has to be brought into captivity to obey christ that means every thought which we are entertaining in our mind must be brought into obedience to the word of god obedience to christ and she just gave us the formula what did she say you cannot fight thoughts with thoughts because you cannot stop thoughts from coming but you can arrest those thoughts and how do you arrest those thoughts by opening your mouth and speaking the word of god that's a that's the formula that's the solution right there if we can start practicing this every single day we can bring every thought into obedience to christ because every thought that is coming against the word of god is simply going to give the devil an excess once we begin to entertain those thoughts we are going to start opening our mouth and speaking the words now when we start speaking the words those devils those those demonic forces are going to start operating for us and instead of angels operating for us now those demons are going to bring those thoughts into manifestation but the moment i begin to experience thoughts of fear moment i begin to experience thoughts of sickness moment i begin to think about corona virus johnny virus tommy virus all the viruses but i open my mouth and start speaking the word of god and i begin to say thank you lord that my body is the body of christ thank you lord that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world lord thank you lord that you put your angels in charge of me as i open my mouth and start speaking those words those words are are, are like a net they are like a like a trap you know just in, intercepting all those thoughts which were coming in our mind and by the time you know all those thoughts have been arrested by the word of god because we are opening our mouth now we'll be experiencing thoughts according to the word of god now we'll be opening our mouth and speaking what the word says and when we open our mouth and speak what the word says 
Psalm 103, verse number 20, it says, the angels hearken to the voice of the Lord. The angels listen to the voice of the Lord. You are opening your mouth and speaking the word. Those angels are going and bringing into manifestation exactly what you have been speaking. Praise Jesus. I have a testimony. Praise God. So one second, Sister Maria Marcella. So the moment you open your mouth and start speaking the promises of God, angels are hearing that word. They are not listening. Now, what did Sarah do? She has got 106, 107 deg uh, degrees temperature. People from the hospital ambulance calls her and tell her, what is your temperature? Now, should she open her mouth and say 106, 107, immediately ambulance is going to come. They are going to put a drip. They are going to make a hue and cry. The whole town is going to know that she has been taken in an ambulance. She's got COVID-19. And, you know, now everybody's going to... Life or death? Yes. What is sure. everybody going to speak? Life or death? Death. Life. They will forget she's her new name, Sarah. Smita is gone to hospital. Oh, she has been put on drip. Oh, she's got coronavirus. Oh, she's isolated. Now, every whole town is talking about, all the family is talking. But she is now isolated at home. And the phone call comes. She is not confessing the sin. She's confessing the unseen. But the unseen is according to the word of God. Unseen. And you know, my sister and brothers, you need to trust the Lord. That's exactly the word she says. Lord, whether I die or whether I live. I if I die, I'm going to be next moment with you. I if, I, if I live, I'm going to stay here and I'm going to rub the devil's nose. Yes. I'm going to rub his nose. And so, when I come to that stage in my life, I say, Lord, it doesn't matter to me. I have the trust in you. And when I open my mouth and share this with somebody, I also want to rub the same trust into them. Now, what happened when Sarah shared her testimony to each one of us? What happened to us? Come on. What yeah. happened to us? We are all excited. Yeah. If God can do it to her, yes. are going to forget after this testimony and go back to the same muck again? Are we no. going to go to the no. same No, no, no. no, no. The no, no. Again? We will never no. want to go there. She has, given us, she has given us the formula. All I need to do is open my mouth and speak the promises. Yes. Don't speak that I got a lot. Don't speak that I don't have money in my account. Don't speak that this is paining and that is paining. Speak the promises of God. And as you begin to speak those promises of God, angels are intercepting those words that you're speaking. Angels are going to work for you. And by before long, you will find that what you are speaking is now manifesting in your life. It's manifesting in your life. Maybe you're looking for the benefit of your children. Maybe you want your children to settle. Many of some of you are looking for the gift of a child. Somebody is looking, you know, for a promotion at a workplace. Somebody wants something good to happen in your life. But if you're going to open your mouth and speak exactly what it is, nothing good is going to come. But if you open your mouth and start speaking exactly opposite to what you see, according to the promise of God, those angels are going to go and bring those manifestations of those promises in your life and in the life of those whom you are speaking those promises for. Yeah. 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 She also Amen. used another faith-filled word. 1 Corinthians 12, 27. Yeah. I am the body of Christ, and Satan, uh, Satan, sickness, sin has no power over me. Amen. 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 Yeah, that's the perfect scripture. Satan, sickness, sin has no power, no place in me. Why? Because my body is the temple of the Holy temple Spirit. The God Spirit. dwells on the inside of me, and therefore no sickness can touch me. And that's why, my brothers and sisters, when we begin to have this mindset, we need to have this mindset of warriors. We need to have this mindset of winners. We need to have this mindset. Now when my mind is resting on the promises of God, what is in my spirit is going to flow without any blocks, without any impediments, through my mind, into my life, into my body, into, the, into like a river, into other people. And they are going to witness and experience the power and the manifestation of God in their life. Thank God. Amen. Isn't that Amen. wonderful? Should Wonder we all not be the same? Should we all not be encouraged that from today, 
will only make this prayer god make me an instrument wherein through my words through my action through my thoughts through the words that i'm speaking you can manifest your glory in the lives of my family i don't know what your past was i don't know how bad it was i don't know what somebody said to you on christmas day i don't know what somebody said to you even half an hour before this class could be but what matters is now that we know the truth we are going to open our mouth and start speaking those promises even if somebody irritates us even if somebody says we do not want to see all this time all we are going to do is open our mouth and speak the promises and those promises will without doubt come into our life if we are consistent now don't say those promises on a sunday when you wake up on monday you say oh i've just woken up nothing has changed and you open your mouth and speak the exactly what you see it's not going to help it has to be consistently spoken and the holy spirit our helper is there to remind us guide us direct us so that we will see the glory in our Praise and God. Praise God. God. Praise so before God. my sister Marcella, you know, is the next one to share, I want Sarah to come back. I want my sister Sarah to come back and make this prayer for each one of us. The same anointing of trust, the same anointing of faith, which she has been encouraged with, which she has just shared with us. She can pass it on to each one of us. Go ahead, my dear sister. Thank you. Before that, brother, you know, I would like to. I forgot to say this, you know, uh, sister, uh, brothers and sisters, you know, uh, the day uh, when I was, uh, you know, uh, separated from my company, uh, that is the day after, uh, just after the call got over. Then they told me about all this that you are separated. Other any, if I was not in the Lord and if I, I had not listened to what brother Vincent or brother Johnson had said, the teachings, I would have been in that same turmoil. So mm -hmm. uh, just after the call uh, ended, my uh, I think uh, in 15 minutes time, uh, my my head of department called me because he was feeling very bad about it. And he is a Catholic. So he called me and he started asking me. Uh, so I said, I'm rushing to this uh, cyber cafe because I have to take printouts. No, no, Smita, I just want to ask you how you are feeling now. I said, I'm blessed. I'm anointed. And he's like, just am I am I listening? Am I hearing what what she's saying? Is 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 it right what I'm hearing? So he again asked me, uh, uh, what did you say? Are you okay? Are you okay? I said, sir, I'm blessed. And mm -hmm. then instead of instead of telling him, instead of you know uh, complaining or you know uh, talking about all my problems, I was talking the gospel to him. I was giving the gospel to him i was telling him on the power of words i was telling him over Pro proverbs 18 21 yes god and that is the time the person now is in touch with me and thank you jesus for you. the person that i was i a brother vincent knows me i had complete unforgiveness towards so many things but today i am a person set free from that word called unforgiveness Praise of course, God. I'm work in progress. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Bless, bless. Thank you, Father, and thank Father, the Holy Jesus. Spirit. Amen. Praise you. Praise God. Go ahead. Go ahead Praise and make that prayer for us. Praise God. Thank Beautiful. You. Beautiful. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful time that you have given me an opportunity to share my testimony. Lord Jesus, I thank you for your love. I thank you, Abba Father, for filling me with the love of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for, for breaking all my strongholds. Lord, I thank you for the new creation that you have made me, Lord, and you have wiped away all my sins, all my, all my past failures today. Lord, in you, Lord, I am a winner. I am a warrior, Lord. I thank you for that, Lord. Lord, I thank you for, your, for, for giving this trust and faith in me, Lord Jesus, everything of you, nothing of me, Lord. Lord, I thank you for this name, Sarah, Lord Jesus. Lord, I thank you for, for bringing me out of every situation, every, every storm, Lord Jesus. You are with me, Lord. Your word says, Lord Jesus, even if you pass through the valley of death, Lord, you will be with me, Lord. I know that you are with me, Lord Jesus. And Lord, today, Lord Jesus, 
the same faith, the same trust that you have given me, that same uh, love that you have given me. Lord, I release the same anointing to all my brothers and sisters listening to my testimony, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, the world would have said that I am a failure, Lord, but you have made you have made me a winner, Lord Jesus. In your eyes, Lord Jesus, I am the most precious one, Lord Jesus. I am your daughter, Lord Jesus. You love me, Lord Jesus, and that's more important, Lord Jesus. Lord, I thank you for this love, Lord Jesus. Lord, I release, release this love, Lord Jesus, your love, Lord Jesus, to all my brothers and sisters, Lord Jesus, listening to this testimony, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Abba Father. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name, Thank I you, Father. Amen. 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 Thank you, Father. Amen. 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 Praise God. Thank you, Thank you for sharing. Beautiful Thank testimony. You. Not only was it a testimony about what God has done, but what is important is you have been able to share with us the secrets which is going to help so many of us to understand how we can also begin to begin to trust the Lord and also begin to see the glory because when we trust him, there is no way the enemy can ever win against those who trust. Because when you trust, you say, Lord, whether I get it or I don't get it, I'm not going to change the way I'm going to operate. My relationship with you is not going to depend on whether my prayers are answered or not, but my relation with you is going to remain steady. And this testimony is not only a testimony of faith, but a testimony of trust. A yes. testimony of trust. Amen? I love. Praise God. This Praise God. God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So thank you, my sister Sarah. And now we have our next sharer, Sister Marcella. It's over to you to share your testimony, Sister Marcella. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, our Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit, Lord. Uh, to begin with, you know, uh, I was very reluctant to share because uh, I, the reason is I didn't want to expose of what I have with me. You know, I'm talking of material things. So, but uh, the word of God that I spoke, I want to share because of that. Now, what has happened is, uh, again, I'm talking of my jewelry. I wore a set, it's another set altogether, another beautiful set. And in the, I wear, wear a scarf. So when I went to church, uh, I was feeling hot, so I removed my scarf. And uh, I got a habit of uh, checking my uh, push button behind, you know. My God, one earring is not there. So now I went back to the place where I parked my car and I searched. I, and uh, so I started my scripture. I just... Went on like a litany. Whatever's hidden away will be brought out in the open. Whatever's covered up will be found and brought to light. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I found it. I know it is. I found it. The, your word has come to pass. And I thank you for finding. I found it. I found it. I kept saying. And the whole time I was praying about it. And uh, when it came to gospel, uh, sorry, epistles, the two readings, the Holy Spirit telling me, listen to the word of God. You stop for a while. Pause. He said the word pause. So I was listening, but uh, I couldn't take it in. The words were, my mind was on that scriptures only because it was continuous, continuous. Uh, and then it came to gospel, I'm paying attention to this gospel because I said, gospel is God speaking to me now. So I heard, then it, when it came to homely, uh, again, the Holy Spirit said, pay attention to the homely. But, and he knows that I'm, and when I paid attention to the homely, the only sentence I got it from, like, got registered is a family that prays together stays together. Today is the feast for the family, holy family. So then um, when it came to uh, praying, uh, uh, prayer of the faithful, father in the end said, uh, make your own prayer. Now, this time it was so beautiful that I did pray about my hearing. I prayed for the families all around the world, for every family that is broken and for, separate, for their unity, for their peace. You know, I was led by the Spirit. And because I was obedient, I, I realized that that one second that I was obedient, what the Holy Spirit is telling me to do it, I did. And then I was at peace. Then I was concentrating on the Mass. And, you know, at that time of con concentrating, the Holy Spirit tell me, it is at home. It is at home. And I'm saying, now whose voice is this? It is this at home. Troubling me, like to say, it's at home. But I just uh, like didn't 
pushed the thought away. I just said, thank you, Jesus. And I kept on again saying, then I said, no, I'm not going to uh, say that whatever is hidden away will be brought out in the open world. I will just now remain, concentrate on my holy mass. And uh, then, you know, the person behind me, my seat, I, I don't doubt her, but I said, uh, it's like, you know, she said, you lost it. I said, no, it's fallen. See that word, you know, I didn't say lo lost. That word, I didn't, I was, I just said it is fallen. You know, lost means it's gone. So I said, it is fallen. Did, did you find it? She picked up something. I and me, I'm not doubting her. And then uh, first thing, when I came home, I looked in the hall room. Then I went to the bedroom because wherever I went by, and suddenly I went to the uh, uh, to the sink where I washed my hand before leaving the house. I washed my hand. At that moment, the Holy Spirit tell me, put on the light. I said, now imagine the Holy Spirit telling you, put on the light. And it's bright because uh, it's a sunny day and my windows are open. It's quite bright. But the minute I switched on the light, within a second, I saw the ring, earring. I said, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You're awesome. Because I said this, Holy Spirit, you have never let me down. But whenever I ask for anything, I got it. Anything under the sun, I got it. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Lord. And I trusted in that word because I know Holy Spirit is always helping and directing me and guiding me. Because even during the mass, he kept telling me, pay attention to the word. Pay attention, pay attention. And then I was relaxed. And then I even he even told me, be at rest. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I'm going to be at rest. Whatever it is, I know you're giving it to me. And I thank you. I just said that was the last time I said it. I thank you, Holy Spirit. I found it. But the very fact I found it, <laughs> and I didn't, I never wanted that because of the set. I said, and in my mind, yeah, I didn't speak it out, but in my mind, if the back push button is gone, gone. But I have not yet found it because I just pushed that away because I got many. But what I want to say because of Sister Sarah, that consistently she spoke the word, I spoke the word consistently. You remember even earlier was the same incident, but hearing only. That's why I didn't want to share it because I said this is like exposing whatever. Thing. But I testifying the word of God comes alive. It is active and operative. It has to accomplish. It never goes void. Never. And the trust I had in that word. Trust. Exactly what sister said. Trust. Trust. I can speak scripture blindly and I Keep it, put the ball in God's court. The, I, I put it in that way. I put the ball in God's court and I said, thank you, Jesus. I'm being arrested. You have done it for me. Thank you. You have done it. My prayer is always, thank you, Jesus. You have done it. And that's what I, I give glory to God for giving me this opportunity to share this because I was reluctant because the small, but because the word of God, I'm sharing it. The word of God. Praise God. Praise God. Sister Marcella, what I wanted to ask you was, the moment you came to know that this hearing is not in your ears, you know, you got this habit, you said, and now your, your focus is so that service is now on your hearing. Is it fallen down? Is it somebody has taken it? Is it lost on the way? And all these thoughts that have stopped you from actually enjoying that service and really participating in a very active way and really, you know, glorifying God. But the moment you switched over, and you said, Lord, doesn't matter. The Holy Spirit said, if you opened your mouth and you said, whatever is lost will be found. And he told you, it's at home. You yes. rested on that promise. And you had a wonderful service. Not only did you think about your hearing, but you began to pray for families. And eventually, when you came back home, not only had you had a wonderful service of praying for those families, but you also had the benefit of finding, according to the Holy Spirit, your earring with the light switched on near your sink. Isn't that awesome? What is so? The earring would have always been there at the sink, but you would have actually, you know, been totally in turmoil till you really found that earring because for you, the focus was the earring. The earring would not have gone anywhere, but that test is where you pass. You pass the test because. Even though you lost that hearing, the enemy had meant it for evil to, you know, uh, affect, uh, avoid you from praying and participating in that service and praying for families. Now, you left the hearing on the side. The Holy Spirit said, don't worry, that's already taken care of. You participate actively. You pray for those families. And not only did you pray, did, not only did you intercede, but you also got your hearing. It was a double 
double double bonanza as they say double package that you receive thank you jesus that true. The minute the Holy Spirit said it is home, I trust it on that word because he directs me, guides me, tells me exactly everything that he needs to tell me. You know, imagine him telling me, listen to the sermon, listen to the uh, readings, listen to the homely. Then when it came to pray of the faithful, I was praying well there. I did my mind went on the word praying for those faithful and then pray for in silence, you know, when he came to that, that's the time. And beautiful Holy Spirit, always, always my best partner, my best friend. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. And you know, my. Sister Marcella, you talked about, you know, you talked about praying for the families. And today, we celebrate the feast of the Holy Family. Now, exactly. all, of us will, all of us will be talking about the Holy Family. Holy Family will be praying for the Holy Family. But what about our own families? Are not our families supposed to be holy families? Yes. Or the are family. we all supposed to be good families? Holy families. So what is the difference being, you know, for example, let me just make you an example. Huh? Something which is very practical. You know, I share the word. I have so many parents, so many parents, okay? They always send a request to me and they say, brother, you're sharing the word. If you know of anyone, you know, if you know a good boy for my girl, a good girl for my boy, you know, I need you to, you know, just, just put in word. You know, you never know. Don't you think as parents, you always are concerned about your children? Come on, let's face it. Don't we ever tell somebody, brother, can you just find a good boy from a good family? Is Don't we ask that? How many of us don't say that? How many of us are really saying, Lord, direct me to a holy family. Direct me to a family where the husband, the wife, the children are rooted and grounded in the word of God. You know, my dear sister and brothers, let me just share because this, this was a trigger from what my sister Marcella was sharing. I never intended to share this, but this is the Holy Spirit wanting to teach us. You know, how many of us, we say we are good families. Why? We don't have any interference with our neighbors. We don't fight with our neighbors. We are not fighting in the house. You know, the father is on his mobile. Mother is in the kitchen. Children are on their own mobile. Everybody's on their own mobile. And in fact, in fact, the poor mother, in the, sometimes in the, in the kitchen, she's saying, oh, children, husband, dinner time, come all of you. Everybody leaves their phone. Even when they come to the table, they will always sit together with their mobiles. So nobody is having a fight with anyone. And yet we call ourselves good families. Are we really communicating with one another? Are we spending time in prayer with one another? Are we really speaking the word of God to one another? Are we sharing Lord? You know, you know, uh, you know, when we grew up, I'm talking about us, myself. When we grew up, there were no mobile phones. So when it was lunchtime or dinner time, everybody was there. Each one was talking. Sometimes, you know, our dinner time would be one hour, one and a half hour because all of us are sharing with our parents. The children are talking about their thing. And nowadays, dinner is sometimes five minutes or seven minutes because everybody is so busy with their phones. Father is busy. Mother is busy. Children are busy. Everybody is busy. And we are all good families. But how many of us are holy families where we keep the phones aside, we keep all technology aside, put the televisions off, put everything which brings distraction to us aside. And we just spend time fellowshipping, really talking to one another, intimately sharing each other's concern in the family. And know, my dear sister and brothers, if this can be brought back in our families, this can be brought back, our, even our relationship with the Lord will change. It will not just be, you know, say a few prayers here, do a little rosary here, finish the mass, finish your obligation. You know, it's all about a relationship. And that relationship we can start having we as parents of insisting with our children, all phones to be switched off, all phones to be kept aside during mealtime, everything, television, radio, every noise to be stopped because we want to grow like the family of Nazareth. We want to grow as a holy family. We want to inter interact with one another. We want to have that intimacy with one another. We want to share each other's concern. And when parents are really listening to their children, there are so many children who will not talk to their parents today because they are talking to their friends. They are talking to strangers. But if we can spend time 
interacting with our parents. Parents can encourage that sort of atmosphere and that surrounding by, you know, insisting on certain discipline. I tell you, my sister and brothers, it's going to bless our families. It's going to help our families to grow into holy families. It's not just about celebrating, you know, 26th Monday after Christmas because the church says holy family. We can look at Mary, Jesus, Mary and Joseph and say they were a holy family. But we can also be that same family. We can emulate the holy family of Nazareth if we as parents can start doing that. And in fact, what Sister Marcella prayed was exactly that, that we need to pray for families. Today, the, the society has been breaking up because you know what? Each one, in fact, I, 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 I say this to myself. I'm sharing the word of God. I'm, I'm preaching the word of God. I can share to everybody around me. And I could see right before my nose that, you know, my own family, my own children, I could be neglecting them. And this is the time for us to put aside things and spend time with our family, spend time having time with our children, having time with our spouse, giving what we have, giving others to our own family first and then sharing the gospel to others. What is the use? And as I'm sharing this right now, I myself am convicted sometimes because many a times I'm counseling somebody, I'm sharing the word, my children are on their phones, well, you know, Melanie is counseling somebody. But as soon as, you know, I began to reflect on what, what the Holy Spirit was just trying to tell me right now when Sister Marcella said we are praying for, you know, families, the Holy Spirit was talking to me and saying, it's time for me to even, you know, make that correction. It's time for us to spend time with our families, with our children. There are times we need to put that phone off. Avoid that phone from being, you know, that phone will always ring. Somebody will come for counseling. Somebody will call. But it's time for us to spend moments, spend time, not just when we are going to pray as a family, but even times when we get together, begin to show love and concern, begin to have that, uh, you know, that relationship. And, you know, as we begin to do that with our family members, Bonding. we reflect in our relationship with the Lord as well. We need to spend time with him. It will transcend into our relationship with our family members. And if families become holy, families become strong, our society also will become strong. Doesn't matter what's happening right now, but we can make a difference by starting it in our own families. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Thank Jesus. You. Thank you, Jesus. So, anybody else would like to share your testimony? Anybody else before we, we close? Anybody else would like to share what the Lord has been doing in our lives? Anybody? Okay, I. I... I'll speak because I've been moved with Sarah's. You know, as I said always, the uh, Holy Spirit is always there, every minute showing me that why don't you place 100% trust? You're going 75% and then, you know, your that doubt comes in and things like that. 100%. When you know, brother, just before Christmas, when every year I have been here in Perth, Marlene used to, you know, she drives, she goes all over. And almost every Friday I used to be with her because I would want to go to church with her. And she told me, you know, I felt very bad when she told me that, um, no, no, this, um, I said 24th, I'll come so that I'll go for midnight mass with you. Are you going for midnight mass? She said, yes. So I said, I'll come and spend the night here and go with you and come back. She said she wanted to avoid me. And she said, no, 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 we're having some other people coming over, you know, and it'd be a big crowd and you, you may be put off and things. So then I never said anything, but I felt a little hurt. Every Christmas I would have dinner there with her and we would be so happy Everything, we both had same kind of, uh, we were in JCILM, we had same type of what you call thinking or what you call, um, we were same uh, in the in the world, like, you know, we were same minded and in Jesus, whatever. And we would discuss and talk about our thing of the day and whatever, like minded. You know, that's it. But this time I was very hurt and it kept on. I said, she's such a close person to me. And 
Anyways, I'll go on my own. I can't go for many months. I will go in the morning. And I think, and after when I phoned her to ask her, Marlene, what are you doing tomorrow or something about that? Uh, I I was. That's another testimony actually. When I phoned her and she to tell her about that person when I went to the shopping center on the twenty second, how that person who had COVID. I he at one forty five he left that same shopping center, and I entered at two, two o eight because they send you a message if you are dead and you have to go and get tested, and I saw oh my god, and the same shop, Aldi's where he went, so I rang Marlene because she was there in the shopping center before that, she didn't even tell me that she was going to my shopping center. So I could meet her. So I rang her to ask her. I said, "You were going for your mummy's gift, so I'd meet you there." But that also she avoided me. And I thought, "Oh my gosh!" But everything was like the Holy Spirit was with me. <laughs> he didn't want me to go to Marlene's house because, and then she sent me a message that, "No, Joyce, I'm not celebrating Christmas this year." Uh, no, I'm not celebrating Christmas. I don't sing car. When I asked her to come online, I said, "Please come for a little while, at least this evening, because brother and brother Vincent and all of us. If you don't want to sing, you can at least give us a talk on Christmas." And she didn't know how to avoid me, and she said, "No, no, no. I'm going to get a test because I was in the shopping center." And she again, she refused me. And then when she sent me this message, see Joyce, I don't listen to carols. I'm not celebrating Christmas. That's the first coming. I'm waiting for the second coming, and I don't uh, celebrate Christmas. And my God, I was very hurt. And I thought, oh, with Marlene, it was so nice, and we were running around. We were going to church, and we would have a, a dinner together. And anyway, so I stayed at home. When I went for mass in the morning, all the churches were closed. There was no mass. I went for the eight thirty mass. There was no mass. And then I said, "My God, Christmas Day, no mass," because I think they have the vigil. And so in the morning, eight thirty, the church was closed. All dead. All closed up. No, no cars. Nothing. Although Google said that there's a mass at eight thirty. Anyways, whatever. I came home. I said. There was an invitation to someone's house for lunch, so I said I'm not going. It's too hot, and I haven't had mass, so I was left alone in the house, and it was like the Holy Spirit talking to me. I spent such a different Christmas compared to all my other Christmases. If I had to be in Marlene's house, I wouldn't have been able to do my mass by myself on Zoom, so nicely talking to Jesus, as though. He was with me celebrating. I had I didn't even want to eat. It was very hot, singing and praising God and did my mass. So that was a blessing in disguise. That's my testimony. Praise God. Praise See, sometimes God. I was feeling so hurt that she she has like I thought she. Became a Jehovah or something? Why is she not celebrating? So praise Christmas? God, Sister Joyce! You were able to spend intimate moments with the Lord, which you would have not done. So yes. all things work together for good yes. for those yes. who love God and who are called according to His purpose. You would have gone to lunch. You would have gone to dinner. You would have gone to fellowship. You would have had Santa. You would have had the Christmas tree. You would have had the Christmas turkey and all the outside celebration. But the Lord was saying, "Joyce, my daughter, I want to spend moments with you." Unlike no, I wanted to give me a different have... Christmas. Sorry, a very different Christmas. It was a different Christmas compared to, and all along, uh, everybody was saying that I'm different now. I told you also once in a testimony that I don't have any interest now in 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 a party, in a show. I even refused the family gathering. I said, "No, it's so too much." Imagine, imagine you were a person who was always a party yeah. goer. Yeah. 
party yeah, poor. Life. And mm. on, on a Christmas day, not to have a party and a celebration for you, it was like, you know, complete mm. circle, a complete, not a complete circle, but a complete turnaround from parties to just fellowship with the Lord and the Holy Spirit. Yes, awesome. it was so different. He made everything to my advantage. Beautiful. And he showed me. He was showing me all the time. You don't know what you're missing. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Sister God is Joyce not found in Beautiful. these places. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody else, my sister and brother, anyone want to share something of your experience? You know, yesterday... I, I visited my uncle. I've got only one uncle, my my uh, my mom's uh, brother. He's the only uncle left. And so on Christmas Day, we went and visited him. It, he's been a while because of COVID. And you know, as we were as we went to his house, there was there was my my auntie, my uncle's wife's sister, and their children, a daughter, and they were really having some issues in their health. And it was an opportunity for me to share the gospel to them. As they were leaving, I said, No, no, hold on. I can see that you're unwell. I can see you're having spondylosis. I can see you're having some, you know, pain in your body. And you know, my dear sisters and brothers, you know, opportunities like this, you don't just let go. You don't say, don't worry. Everything will be fine. I'll pray for you. No, 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 no. Never do that. If you're in the world and you have a relationship with the Lord, you don't tell people, I will pray for you. That's not, that's not, that's not Christian. That's, that's exactly different. You don't use terms, I will pray for you. You teach them how to receive the truth because they don't know the truth. They may have gone to church. They may have done that for so long. And, you know, another half an hour went sharing the gospel to them. They were, you know, finally we, we made that prayer. And, you know, she, she experienced healing. And when they went back, there was that joy on their look. So imagine a little bit here, you get an opportunity. You're always ready to share. Otherwise, you know what we can do? We can go to 10 houses make a prayer for them, leave that house. And they will depend on you to come again after 15 days, after one month to again pray over you. But there is no relationship because you have not taught them the truth. And that's why when you come to the word of God, don't use terms, I will pray for you. Stop using those terms, I will pray for you. Tell them, I will teach you the truth if you are ready to listen. If they say they don't want to listen, it's up to them. But don't reject the truth for them. Share the truth. Whatever you are learning, share it with somebody. Give the gospel, give the good news to somebody. And when you do that, you have actually given life to them. You have given them the best gift because you have given them Christ itself. You can give them your food. You can give them, you know, roses. You can give them Santa's gifts. You can give them, you know, secret Santa, whatever gifts you want. But when you give somebody Christ and his word, you have given them the best gift ever. And that's what we need to do. Give people the gift of life and the gift of Jesus to them every time we meet and every opportunity that arises when we can give Christ to somebody else. Amen. So anybody among you who, who wants to share something during your Christmas time? I know my sister Joyce was at home. She was away from the party because she was getting fed by the Lord with that one to one. Has any one of you got something to share? Maybe, you know, you know, during this few days, or maybe it doesn't matter only in the next the last 24 hours of yesterday, but in these days, as we have been preparing for Christmas, have you experienced something like this? Have you experienced the joy of Christmas? Have you experienced that preparation? Is there something that's happening in your life that you want to testify and tell everybody, tell the world what the Lord is doing in your life? Anybody? Anybody wants to share that? Anybody? Come on, my brothers and sisters. I'm sure there's something the Lord is doing in our lives. There's something that, you know, he has transformed within. He's helped us to grow in our relationship. And we want to share this joy with others. Otherwise, you know, it's all about, you know, what I can get, what I can receive. Instead of being only looking at what I can get or what I can receive, let's look at it. What I have given, what opportunities I have to give. And when you start sharing those... The coming back is going to be very simple. It's going to be sowed back. Whatever you sow is going to come back to you as a harvest. Amen? Brother, I want to 
something very small. Yes, Sister Marcella, yeah. Um, I, I live alone, but I'm very happy. And the children are, uh, they are not worried because they know that I know how to take care of myself. And uh, all this time I was using, uh, listening to the word of God by Brother Johnson, whatever, all the uh, JCLM preaching. And so I started putting carols. Then that's, you know, when I'm talking to my children, they heard me, Mama, you put carols? I said, yeah, that's exactly what you should do. I said, yes, I know how to, uh, you know, as, as per the season. Then when I came to uh, talking to my grandchildren, I said, uh, they were saying Merry Christmas, Avo, Merry Christmas, Avo. So I said, uh, did you say happy birthday, Jesus? And that's where I taught all my grandchildren to say today is Jesus' birthday and how your birthday you celebrate. That's how we are celebrating Jesus' birthday. So you must say happy birthday, Jesus. Did you say that? And then they learned it. And I was so happy that small little gospel I could give them and enlighten my children's mind. You know, as I told you, I use my grandchildren to teach my children. And when wow. I told them, so go and tell everybody, tell your uh, tell your grandma, grandpa, uh, happy, say happy birthday, make them say, and I don't know whether they said it, but I was happy I could tell them. And now they are like the eldest is 13, 10, 8, and 5. So I said, all these years, nobody told them about Jesus' birthday. So they they learned something. Today is Jesus' birthday, and happy birthday, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Beautiful. Beautiful, Sister Marcella. Beautiful. So, if, if we don't have any more sharers, then Sister Marcella, go ahead and do that closing prayer as we end our session today. Go ahead and make that closing prayer. Thank you, our Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, Lord. All glory and honor to you, Lord God, for all the sharing we have done. Uh, I don't know anyone did before Sarah, but Sarah did a beautiful testimony. And through her word of our Father, we've all received the anointing. The anointing is still flowing into our lives and into our family, Lord Jesus. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for this season. It's, it's, uh, Christmas is every day, but help us to only, only, only focus on your word and your word that brings life into our family, into our lives, and to spread this life into the families, wherever we meet. Like I have if, during this last week, Lord Jesus, I when I gave that joy to others, I received it wherever I went for shopping. I wished all other people not of our faith Merry Christmas and a happy. And they were so happy. They responded back. It was so good that we at least we can show them Jesus. And then I said, Jesus, birthday, Jesus loves you all. And that's how we celebrated the day. And I thank you, Lord, for through your word, we are renewing our mind day by day and we are becoming, becoming more than a conqueror, Lord Jesus, for your kingdom alone. Lord, help us to only focus on you and your word and not be distracted because there is a lot of distraction from the God of this earth. And he is no, he is just under our feet. But when we are not aware of your presence in our life, Lord, <coughs> he comes to and come to disturb us but lord thank you for your holy spirit as a gift to us and for your word lord that is always in our mind in our heart and we speak it out lord lord give everyone that boldness to speak out to each and every one whoever they meet lord i make this prayer in the holy and mighty name of jesus amen 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 Amen. 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 Thank Amen. you, Sister Marcella. Amen. Thank you so much for that beautiful closing prayer. And, uh, you know, we're just going to end our session. I'm just going to cut off the recording. Praise God. Thank you. Thank